The microbiome constitutes a vast array of different bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Specifically, the gut microbiome has over 100 trillion bacteria from over 5,000 different species. Among these are a group of bacteria known as bifidobacteria. So if you've been following Layer Origin or myself for a while, you'll know that bifidobacteria are extremely important. And in today's video, I wanna kind of go over the roles of bifidobacteria in the gut and how they interact with not only our guts, but our overall health. So bifidobacteria um, are a class of bacteria known as actinobacteria, and they play a really critical role in the gut because they create molecules um, known as organic acids. Specifically, they make um, a short chain fatty acid called acetate and an organic acid called lactate. Um, basically, what you need to know is that these molecules are made from the, the digestion of resistant starches, polyphenols, and other indigestible carbohydrates like tuficosal lactose by bifidobacteria. So bifidobacteria basically feasts on these molecules and makes a bunch of acetate and lactate and secretes that into the gut lumen where it can be taken up by other bacteria to fuel the production of molecules such as butyrate. So butyrate is a short chain fatty acid, not made, not made it like directly by bifidobacteria, but what bifidobacteria do is feed the bacteria that do make butyrate, and in that way, they bolster butyrate production. And butyrate is, is an essential metabolite, not only for colon cells, because it serves as the primary fuel source for colon cells, but it actually can enter the bloodstream through the gut, interact with immune cells present in the gut, in the gut um, region, as well as in distal regions throughout the body. And through these interactions with immune cells, butyrate can change and modulate gene expression and lead to the production of more anti-inflammatory effectors and decrease the production of inflammatory factors. In this way, butyrate is really critical for modulating the inflammatory responses in the body and preventing the development of inflammatory diseases. These include inflammatory bowel disease, um, things like ulcerative colitis, even bowel cancers, um, the development of autoimmunity, um, even the even cognitive decline. So short chain fatty acids like butyrate can influence uh, our brain's function and the, the function of the tight junctions present not only in the gut barrier, but also in the blood brain barrier. So tight junctions are basically the space between cells that line the gut um, or in the case of the brain, line the blood-brain barrier. And these junctions, these tight junctions, are responsible for making sure that only a select set of molecules can permeate through and reach across. So in the gut, for example, you don't want molecules that are toxic to the body to enter through the gut lining. So in a healthy gut, the tight junctions prevent these molecules from crossing over into the bloodstream and interacting with our, our human tissues. However, in a condition called leaky gut, um, when the gut barrier starts to degrade, you get a loosening of these tight junctions. And this loss of integrity leads to leaking of different molecules such as lipopolysaccharide, which is a bacterial toxin that's present in the bacterial cell wall and essentially triggers off an inflammatory response by our immune cells. So this lipopolysaccharide, also known as LPS, can leak through the gut barrier into the bloodstream and trigger off kind of a systemic inflammation throughout the body, which over time, low-grade inflammation like this contributes to cognitive decline, uh, contributes to cancer, um, and overall the aging process, um, also known as inflammaging, because aging, the diseases associated with aging and the phenotypes of aging are really driven largely by inflammation and the damage that that, that inflammation will confer over time. So in this way, the indirect support of butyrate production by bifidobacteria is crucial for kind of slowing down the aging process and contributing to a healthy aging. In addition to uh, bifidobacteria supporting butyrate production, you know, it also contributes to diversity of the gut biome. So like I mentioned before, bifidobacteria create lactate and acetate, which go on to feed other species of bacteria. And through these interactions, known as cross-feeding interactions, the diversity of the gut microbiome is enhanced. And diversity is one of the critical factors to gut microbiome health. 
you can think of um, gut biome diversity being akin to an old growth forest where, you know, in an old growth forest, you have many different flora and fauna, um, fungi and bacteria contributing to the ecosystem. You have a topsoil layer that's responsible for holding water like a sponge and preventing fire from spreading. You have mycelium from fungus acting as a web through the soil, communicating and, and, and transferring nutrients across disparate areas of the forest. You have bacteria in the soil that are allowing nitrogen to become bioavailable to plants so that plants can make proteins and those proteins and plants can then go on to nourish the animals. The animals consume the plants and their manure then goes back to feeding the plants. So it's this whole, you know, web of interactions between different um, species within the ecosystem that are contributing to the health of the ecosystem as a whole. And you can think of microbiome diversity as accomplishing the same thing. So if you have a very diverse microbiome, you are, you're more resilient to things like pathogen exposure. So pathogens, pathogenic bacteria or viruses may not be able to get a foothold in the gut and then the, you as the host won't get sick. Whereas something uh, like a microbiome after antibiotic use can be, contrib uh, can be attributed to something like um, a monocrop agriculture. So in monocrop agriculture, you need pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, in order to actually allow the crops to grow. Because plants aren't supposed to grow in monocrops, they need um, other plants and animals and different fungi and bacteria to you know, support their growth throughout a variety of environmental conditions. So in the absence of these, you need a lot of human intervention to even allow these plants to grow. So in, in the case of the gut microbiome, if you have very low diversity, you're very susceptible to infection by pathogens such as salmonella um, or even viral um, infections of the gut that cause viral diarrheal diseases, etc. So enhancing diversity is a crucial factor of optimizing gut health. And bifidobacteria, by focusing on bifidobacteria, we are able to largely accomplish this um, by creating these strong colonies of bifidobacteria that then go on to support the growth of other key species in the gut. And not only supporting overall diversity, but butyrate production as we spoke on before. Um, so basically to, to support bifidobacteria growth in the gut, you want to prioritize foods such as uh, the human milk oligosaccharide 2-fucosalactose, which layer origin cells in their product Pure HMO. This molecule is specifically um, an amazing food source for bifidobacteria. They're basically designed to um, break down these, this molecule. In fact, in the infant gut, there are up to 90% of the infant gut microbiome is constituted by bifidobacteria. And that's because of the, the polysaccharide content of breast milk. And, you know, over time, the bifidobacteria population dwindles. And this dwindling of bifidobacteria in the gut is associated with um, diseases of aging, inflammation, um, and everything that we spoke on before. So human milk oligosaccharides are a great uh, way to bolster bifido populations in your gut. In addition to that, eating foods that are rich in polyphenols, such as dark fruits, you can think of things like raspberries, blackberries, pomegranates, um, apple skins, uh, citrus fruits. These are all rich in polyphenols. Anything that has like a nice vibrant color, you can think of as having polyphenols that can then benefit your gut microbiome by supporting bifido growth. In addition to that, things that contain resistant starches. So foods such as cooked and cooled potatoes, cooked and cooled rice, beans, legumes, semi-green bananas. All of these foods contain resistant starches that can directly feed bifidobacteria and support their growth and the, the growth of other key species through the production of acetate and lactate. So through the simple strategies of, of just targeted supplementation and targeted um, nutrition, we can really enhance the health of our gut microbiome and our overall bodies through supporting bifidobacteria populations and, and really set ourselves up for a healthy aging process.